Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here. Today I'm doing my full review on the all new Dell Inspiron 17 7000 series. Let's go and see if this laptop is worth picking up. The Dell Inspiron 17 7000 series is aimed at someone who wants a desktop replacement. I mean, you can lug this around every now and then, but its size is cumbersome and heavy. It will most likely spend most of its time sitting at your office. The base model starts at 949 US, and that gets you a Core i5 5200U, 12GB of RAM, and a 1TB hard drive. Keep in mind, the base model does not feature a dedicated graphics card. Now the model we have here is 1299 US, and this one gives you a Core i7-5500U, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 1 terabyte hard drive, and a dedicated NVIDIA 845M. I was hoping for a quad-core Haswell option to be available, but we still have no luck. The top of the lid and the palm rest is made out of full aluminum. Both sections were made out of one solid piece of aluminum. It feels very slick, and it does a great job of resisting fingerprints. However, the bottom is based out of plastic and it makes a big difference. The rigidness from all around the laptop feels lost once you fill the bottom side. I was really hoping that Dell would finally replace the plastic cover with a full sheet of aluminum. The weight and height is pretty hefty too. It comes at 7.3 pounds with a height of 1.1 inches. There is some keyboard flex around this laptop, especially around the centerpiece. The top section here feels pretty rigid because it's a full piece of aluminum. Now keep in mind here, I am pressing down very firmly. Now for your ports on the left side, you got your AC charging port, full-sized HDMI port, RJ45 Ethernet port, two USB 3.0 ports, an SD card reader, and your headset microphone jack combo. Now let's see how far an SD card will stick out. It's not 100% flush mount, but it just barely sticks out. On the right side of the laptop, you got your security lock slot, a DVD drive, and two more USB 3.0 ports. Now let's talk about display performance. The display has a weird screen door effect since there is a Gorilla Glass sheet protecting it. At first it looked kind of awkward, but after using it for a couple of days now, I kind of got used to it. This 17.3 inch display is provided by Chime. The colors are accurate and the contrast ratios are actually pretty good for a TN panel like this one. Take a look at some of these images here. The colors pop and it looks vivid. The sRGB coverage came in at 97% and the Adobe RGB came in at 75%. These scores are very high for a TN panel. The brightness levels were also pretty good. During indoor usage, I kept the brightness at around 50 to 60%. The viewing angles were pretty impressive for a TN panel. Overall, this panel does a great job of producing accurate colors and viewing angles. The downside to this panel is how reflective it is. If you work by windows or have bright lightings in your office, be sure to keep that in mind while making this purchase. Hopefully for the next generation, we will see more options like a matte display. Yes, you also get a touchscreen panel with the 17.3 inch display. Scrolling and multi-touch gestures were smooth and precise. Overall, the touchscreen performance was good. Next up is the Dell Precision trackpad. This trackpad has a plastic finish that feels a tad cheap compared to the Dell XPS 13. Yes, I've been spoiled with a trackpad on the XPS 13. However, the performance is actually pretty good. Two finger scrolling and multi-touch gestures have been accurate and responsive. Tracking performance has also been smooth sailing. You get a full-size keyboard with a 10 key numeric keypad. The keyboard is spacious and the feel is pretty good, but the key travel is kind of short. For a big bulky laptop like this one, the key travel should be excellent. With that being said, the keyboard was adequate at most situations. You also get a backlight keyboard with two stage lighting, you either get low or high. The processor powering this laptop is a Broadwell Dual Core i7-5500U, which is a ULV processor clocked at 2.4 GHz with a turbo boost up to 3 GHz. The performance is good for basic productivity and light photo to video editing. However, if you plan on doing heavy video editing and heavy CPU work, then I would look elsewhere. This is why I am so disappointed that there is no quad core option available. How are you going to market a 17 inch desktop replacement with a dual core ULV processor found in many ultrabooks? I just don't get it. I know the Broadwell quad core chips are not available yet, however I still would have loved the quad core i7 Haswell chip. And when summertime hits, I highly doubt we'll see a quad-core Broadwell version. Alright guys, enough of me complaining. Here are the benchmarks for the Core i7-5500U. This is the Geekbench 3 performance score. For the single core score, I got 2,888. And for the multi-core performance, I got 5,907. Followed by Cinebench R15. For the CPU score, I got 279 CB. And our last benchmark here is PC Mark 8. The home accelerated test came in at 2,904. Again, with these kind of scores, you can expect good performance for light to medium duty applications. 
For your integrated graphics, you have the Intel HD 5500, which is a fairly capable card, but for better performance, you also get the all-new NVIDIA 845M. The good news here is the 845M runs the GDDR5 memory, however, the bad news is the card only has a memory interface of 64 bits. This is a downgrade compared to last year's model, which featured the GDDR5 version of the NVIDIA 750M. And when you combine this GPU with a dual-core ULV processor found here, things are not going to be smooth for some games. With that being said, many of today's games will be playable on low to medium settings at a resolution of 1366 by 768 For the 3D Mark Advanced Edition, Firestrike's score came in at 1176 followed by Skydiver with a score of 3995 and for Cloudgate came in at 6776 And our last benchmark here is Cinebench R15 to open GL test. That test came in at 45.01 frames per second. Alright, let's go ahead and launch Battlefield 4 on the 845M on low settings at 1600x900. So far, the game is playing at a decent frame rate. We're getting around 29 to 33 frames per second. For better performance, you can lower your resolution to 1366x768. So there you have it, that was just a quick test on Battlefield 4 on the NVIDIA 845M. After about 45 minutes of Battlefield 4 gameplay, the hottest GPU and CPU temperatures I got was around 69 degrees Celsius. And the average CPU temperature was around 60 degrees Celsius. So far, the dual core i7 ran pretty cool during my tests. And here are some thermal shots of the exterior of the laptop. This is courtesy of the FLIR thermal imaging camera for the iPhone 5S. So far, the hottest point we got was around 38 to 39 degrees Celsius. And here are some shots on the bottom. As you can see here, the middle section is around the hottest at around 41 degrees Celsius. These temperatures are pretty good while put under pressure. You can thank Dell for the efficiency of the fans and the dual core i7. Speaking of temperatures, let's talk about fan noise. During medium to heavy loads, the fans can be loud at times. But if you're just browsing the web and performing light tasks, the fan noise levels are not really an issue. The Dell Inspiron 17 7000 features an HD webcam and here's the test of it in action. Hey, what's up YouTube's me Andrew, testing out the webcam quality on the Dell Inspiron 17 7000 series. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Speaker performance from the two bottom side facing speakers were poor. The sound quality was flat and the low end bass was less than average. The only good thing about these speakers were the sound levels. Most 17 inch laptops I have tested in the market sound way better than this one. For the sound test, we're going to start off at 50% and go up from there. For your wireless, you're going to get the Intel Dual Band Wireless AC7265. It also features Bluetooth 4.0. This card has fast transfer rates and the range is pretty good. Overall, the connection has been solid. Battery performance was pretty good for a 17 inch laptop. With casual usage like web browsing, mixed video streaming, and word processing, I was getting around 5.5 to 6.5 hours out of a full charge with the screen brightness set at around 50%. Now for the next generation, I would like to see a bigger battery pack in there because a 17 inch laptop with a 58 watt hour battery pack feels kind of small. And here are some of the internal components that are easily accessible by the consumer. First up you got your 58 watt hour battery pack, 1 terabyte hard drive, and your 16 gigabyte of RAM. The hard drive is made by Seagate and it features 1 terabyte of storage with an 8 gigabyte cache of SSD. The performance is just a tad faster than a traditional 5400 RPM hard drive. For the best performance, I would recommend upgrading to a solid state drive. So let's get to the final conclusion of the Dell Inspiron 17 7000. If you're in the market for a desktop replacement for basic productivity and light video work, then the Dell Inspiron is worth a look. However, if you want desktop replacement power in a 17 inch laptop, then I would take a look at some of the Toshiba satellite laptops, which will have the quad core i7 processor, and they usually feature a dedicated GPU. This completes my full review on the all-new Inspiron 17 7000 series. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.